You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva in knowledge, Lady Mocha, representing Mocha's Cafe de Paris, where I'm always serving you wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual awareness. want to thank all of y'all who still supporting me, still rocking with me, still being loyal. I can't thank y'all more than enough. Even when I'm not uploading, y'all throwing the cash apps, y'all showing love, emailing me, checking on me. I so appreciate it. Each and every one of y'all, big ups to all of my subscribers. You guys are the best. You guys and you ladies are the best. For those of you ladies who would rather have a space where it's specifically for women, I do have my women's only channel, Mocha's Ladies Lounge. You're welcome to subscribe over there if you're more comfortable in a space in which is specifically for women. I get it. Because some of these spaces are not female friendly. And this is the reason why I'm specifically doing this content today, y'all. Because I wanted to talk about how gender war has become a safe haven for rejected individuals. So we already know in the black YouTube sector, there's so much division. It's a lot of division specifically amongst black women and black men no shit sherlock we've seen the division and it has steadily gotten worse i would say um especially once a lot of specific content creators um their channel started elevating and a lot of the reasons why a lot some some content creators their channels are elevating because they have learned the the hustle to gaining a large amount of followers if is that you have to choose a side you got to choose a side if you want to be successful in the black youtube sector you cannot be balanced that is why um content creators such as myself who do content um for black men and black women we really don't get the shine that we really kind of deserve because we're not picking a side you know I'm, I'm not over here attacking black women day in and day out so therefore i'm not going to have a lot of men that are going to rock with me and follow me but i do notice when i do do content about black women being ratchet you know and on the hood rat shenanigans that is usually when i get the most views also, I don't have a large amount of female followers because I'm not constantly going in on black men. I'm not part of the sisterhood, divestors, whatever you want to call it. And I don't knock the sisters who do that. Hey, um, everybody needs a space somewhere they can feel safe. And you have some women, they really rather follow women who are consistently bashing and trashing black men. That's a safe haven, safe haven. That's a place of comfortability for them. No different than um, men who only want to follow men. I've heard men. I've heard men say this. Even guys who I supported, even guys who I liked, the gender war will bring out people's real intentions. The gender war sooner than later will reveal people for who they are. I've had certain people who I choose not to speak on upon say. I would never listen to a woman, even if what she says makes perfect sense. I would never support black women because she's a woman. And I've also seen men get offended for other, for black men who do have their own mind and who do choose to support black women. They will try to belittle men who do support black women. And I'm not talking about supporting black women that, that's bashing black men. Of course, that would not make no sense. Like me, I'm not going to support too many brothers that just bash black women all the time. I mean, put these brothers in check too. Have a balance because we all got issues we need to work on. I can't sit in spaces in which you're just going to attack women day in and day out. That's fine sometimes, but it has to be a balance, and I get it. You know, a lot of them not going to do that because they have become very addicted to the cash apps and, and the views and the followers, so I get it. 
they have set that tone and in order to keep their fan base they got to keep that same tone which they set so if you started off your channel bashing and trashing black women you got to keep that same energy because you will lose your women hating men followers the moment you start saying something about what black men need to do, what black men need to work on. Oh man, you simping now, you cupcaking now. So a lot of these guys, they have to keep that energy once they put it out there. So nevertheless, um, I've, I've come to realize, you know, um, people are not going around here just hating the opposite sex just because. I, when, whenever I, I'm in a space and I've been in spaces which I also want to say I have had to leave a couple of uh, a couple of spaces because a, a lot of these men they don't have any control over their red pill attack dogs they have no control over them um, a lot of men who I used to support a lot of men who I have followed for a long time, I had to stop following them. Um, you know, and, and, it, and it's because it's due to the fact that, you know, they don't have no control over their channel. You know, they don't have any control over uh, the, the nonsense and the chaos that they allow, you know. Because um, at the end of the day, I, I don't expect any, any of these guys to defend me because at the end of the day, if they defend black women, they're going to come off as simps. They're going to catch a lot of heat from their male audience, from their male followers. If you, want, as a black man, if you want to keep a lot of your male followers, which is the majority of them, are red pill, um, or 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 red pill, um, what's the word? I don't want to try to say, but um, those who are. Um, if the majority of your followers who are, you know, red pill minded, if that's the correct word to say, um, the moment you come to the defense of a black woman who's being disrespected for no reason, not because she's coming in there clout chasing, not because she's coming in there, um, you know, uh, disturbing the peace, um, disrespecting the guys on your panel, whatever, um, you have a woman come on your panel being respectful, being polite, conducting the conversation with intelligence and classiness. And the moment one of the panel parasites says something disrespectful to a female who um, was generous enough to come on your panel and share her ideas, share her perspective, share her viewpoints. Here it is. You got your red pill clown that wants to say why? Why you got that? Why, why you got this broad on here? Why you got? Why you letting these broads on the panel? The, the, the panel's supposed to only be for the brothers. The panel's supposed to only be for the brothers. Why you got her up here? So you have a lot of these male content creators. They're gonna do whatever it takes to appease their male audience, and if it means shitting and pissing on a female followers or uh, their female guest who have decided to hit the link so she can come on the panel, share her ideas, give her viewpoints, share her perspective, and you let your panel parasite run your channel and tell you no bra should be on the panel. No woman should have an opinion. You allow that. You know why? Because you don't want to be considered a simp. So you allow the disrespect and then I've heard the audacity. I heard I heard a guy say this that I used to support. I heard a guy say, "Well, I've only let I only let this person back because uh, my audience does support them. My audience does rock with this person. Why would you let a person back on your panel who has ran away half of your female followers? Why? Because you want to appease." Um, you know, the red, the, the rage and red pill bros who are in your chat room. Half of them don't even donate to you. Half of them don't even support you like that. They just love to be in your space because they know that you will allow anything to happen to your female followers and you're not going to, you're not going to support them. You're not going to back them up. So, um, a lot of these men who, 
uh, who uh, call themselves to be man of spear, call themselves inspiring, empowering black men. I don't have a problem with that because, there again, you have women out here that are doing it as well. They are empowering black women as well. So it would be hypocritical for me to be in my feelings because you have um, black men who are doing content that that's, that's to, to reach black men to have more confidence, to let black men know that you don't have to just choose who chooses you. You need to be more selective about what type of woman you breed with, who you have children from, who you build with. I don't have a problem with men who give this type of content to uplift and empower other men. My problem is that when you when you feel the only way you could empower black men is by trashing and bashing black women, by allowing the red pill raging pit bulls to come into your space and attack and verbally abuse black women who come in your space who do not deserve it. That is not is not granted for. Now, when you have the hood rats coming on there, you know cussing dudes out, getting spiffy on your channel, you know, turning up for no reason, then that's a different story. Uh, if a female comes in a man's face bringing hood rat energy, then I have no empathy for black women who go in spaces and who change the energy or change the dynamics, then all bets are off. Whatever happens, whatever energy she gets from the men in the chat and men on the panel, then guess what? She gonna have to boss up and deal with it. If you're coming in the man space, being disrespectful, changing the energy, trying to change the narratives, bringing your, you know, your, your feminist, uh, your volatile feminist energy, you know, then no. Whatever, whatever these dudes, however they decide to check you, however they decide to, 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 to come at you, you got to be woman enough to deal with the energy you put out there. I have no empathy for those type of sisters. But this is basically my overall point, and um, I may go, go back to that depending on how this content, um, you know, continues to transition. So, how how the gender war has become a safe haven for rejected individuals. First of all, let me tell y'all something. Nobody hates something just to hate it. It's a reason if you're a black man and you got so much animosity towards black women, something has happened. Something has happened for you to have so much animosity to the point that if a black woman is in your presence, if a black woman is on the panel, if a black woman is in the chat room, you, you feel the need to drag her. Even if she's not being disrespectful or doing anything to draw that type of energy, just the fact that she's black and she's a female, you got to say something disrespectful. You have to come at this woman. Something has traumatized you as a black man to make you have this amount of hate or animosity towards a black woman. Now, if you don't do this with other races, if you don't feel this energy when there's white women in the room, you don't feel that energy when it's Latino women in the room. You only feel that energy when it's a black woman. And surprisingly, some of these men are even with black women and got problems with black women. Some of these black men have black children from black women. And for some strange reason, when a black woman is in their presence, it's this, um, it's, it's this, I know the word I'm trying to formulate. It's this ticking time bomb that's just waiting for this black woman to get out of pocket so he can implode on her. A lot of y'all sisters out there, if y'all been in some of these spaces, if you've been in some of these panels, and don't worry guys, I'm going to get to how these black women do, black men as well, Okay. So before you get ready to shut me down and count me out, I'm going to go in on both sides because I want black men and black women to be clear of this because I'm tired of y'all, you know, falling for the Fugazi and, you know, y'all y'all, y'all are basically climaxing 
at the gender war. You know, um, a lot of y'all are so infatuated with black men and black women that are constantly at war with each other. So, back to my point. You have some of these men, and I'm going to say some, not all. If this message does not apply, you ain't got to reply. I'm as clear as I can make this. I know all black men are not like that. I, I know there are black men who adore black women, who respect black women, who love the hell out of black women, even though we extra and we be doing the most. You know, I know that there's black men out there who really love black women, despite all of what we take them through and what they take, take us through. I This ain't for them. Okay, I'm talking about, uh, you know, these red pill raging men who sees the opportunity for a black woman to say something wrong, do something wrong, so he can empty his clip out on her, verbally attack her, verbally assault her, and degrade her because he has so much animosity towards black women anyway. So he he is waiting for the opportunity to present his present itself so he can implode all of his red pill animosity towards her. Now let me also say about this. I don't think all guys who speak on red pill are bad. I don't think all guys who do red pill content it is all women haters. I'm talking about the ones who are so infatuated with the thought of red pill to the point to where it makes them very aggressive towards women. That's my problem. I don't care about the guys who preach on red pill, who speak on red pill, who do red pill content, mental spill. That's cool. That's fine. It's the ones who are so obsessed with their hate towards black women that uh, they have built so much toxicity to the point to where um, any black woman who comes near them, they will unleash the red pill beast on her. All it takes is for her to disagree, not disrespect. Let me tell you men this, you male content creators, there's a difference between a woman being disrespectful and a woman I just disagreeing. Just because I disagree with you, it does not make me disrespectful. Let me say that. Just because I disagree, I'm not co-signing being a Patricia pick me on your viewpoints. And I don't and I'm challenging you intellectually. It does not mean that I think my points are more valid, that I have so much intelligence to where I don't have to respect yours. It just means I have my own mind. And as much as you men out there may think you want a Patricia pick me, trust me, you don't want a Patricia pick me. You don't want these women coming into your spaces agreeing with everything you say. Because if a woman is agreeing with everything you say, nine times out of ten, she has an agenda. Believe it or not, the real women are the ones who will rebuttal your talking points, who will challenge you, who will go against you respectfully, give you something to think about. The Pakishas who, who, oh yeah, I agree. I, I think that all women, you know, need to better themselves. The Pakisha, she has an agenda. It's not in a woman's nature, whether she's black, white, or Latino, Latina, Puerto Rican, whatever, to agree with everything a man says. That is not in our nature. So if a woman is agreeing with everything you say, she has an agenda. And as soon as you get comfortable with her, because she's agreeing with everything you say, and you let her more and more in your space, you let her have more and more of a say, so showing up over time, she's going to start showing her true colors. She's not going to be agreeing with everything you say once she has gained your trust, once she has gained attention from your male audience from your subscribers they done got used to seeing her on your panel as part of your team slowly but surely i've seen a lot of men get bamboozled they go hard for the pakishas 
And Pakeshas are not just black women. I done seen white women, foreign women who have became Pakeshas just so she could earn a position and in and, and, and the popular male content spaces. She knows how to play the game to get in good, to earn your trust, to earn the recognition of your followers to where your followers are telling you, nah, man, you need to keep her. She's a real one. Nah, man, don't let these black bitches uh, 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 get mad and hate on you and be hating on her that they telling you that she needs to be removed from your panel. You have, you have some of these guys that are so infatuated with red pill. They think they know women better than women. And they really don't know women better than women. Women, we can look and, and pay attention to a woman's bot, uh, 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 her, her tone and the things that she says, even if she won't cam up and shows who she is. As women, we can read in between the lines. We can read when a female is only um, being cool, calm, and collective and agreeing with all the viewpoints because she's slowly but surely trying to bait the trust of the popular content creator. And when we call her out on it, it's these red pill dudes, you know, these red pill raging dudes in the panel or these are the ones in the chat room who get mad and say we hating. They say we jealous because everybody's showing um, the Latino Pakisha or the white or, 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 or the white girl or whoever that's caping so hard for y'all um, because we call them out. Y'all say we caping. Because we women. Women can read women. Black women, we can read white women. Okay? We're not always hating on them. We can read when they are trying to kiss up to you, get in good with you, so they can get in position with you and take some of your followers. Take some of your um your 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 uh panelists. You know, she's she's building a foundation of trying to earn followers. What better way to do it than to get a sucker who thinks because she's white or light, thinks she's got the complexion for the connection, he's more likely to give her the benefit of a doubt because he's thinking it's all about him. When she's gotten smart enough to know that if I want to get in good with this with, and get and start my own channel and earn followers and get the support of male subscribers i got to get in good be, be, become the pretend pick me and agree with the viewpoints come on the panel and once i have gotten a, uh, gotten a good amount of subscribers or people that rock with me because i got in cool with him i'm ready to go jump ship and go someplace else. And it's cool because that's what everybody does. You know, everybody clouts off of everybody. People try to act like only certain people clout. Everybody is clouting. Okay? Everybody, that's how you do it. It's called networking. You got to get in good with the popular content creator in order for you to become successful. But don't sit up here and act like it's just something black women do. You got women of all races who have learned the combination of black men. And because they know black men got so much animosity towards black women, that gives them even more of a bigger opportunity, you know, to play the role of the pretend pick me and agree with and agree with the viewpoints, especially if she's if she's agreeing that black women are trash. She really don't agree with that. Because at the end of the day, women, we all side with each other. We don't like each other, but we side with each other. Don't think these white women or Latino women don't feel some type of way seeing how you treat black women. Because in their culture, they men don't do them like that. Okay? So when they see you doing your black women or disrespect your black women, they looking at it like, I'm just going to capitalize off this ninja and then I'm jumping ship. That's how they do. You know what I mean? So, um, nevertheless, you know, uh. I realize that you're not going to hate something just to hate something. If, if, if you are a black man and you got all this animosity towards a black woman, something has happened. You're, you're not always on a thousand for no reason. Anytime a black woman opens her mouth and you're quick to attack. You don't do, you don't do it with the other brothers on the panel. You don't do it with other black men. You don't even do it with other races of black women. That I mean, of other races outside of black women. Correction. So, that lets me know. I look at the psychology of why these men do what they do. And why they say what they say about black women. Something has happened. If you can stay on black women all day, all night... 
That's all your content is about. Something has happened. And you're not being transparent with your male followers who think you have their best interest because you're constantly going in and attacking black women. You're, you're not doing it because you really care about black men. It's not about black men empowerment. What it is, you have become a bitter black man based on things and based off of personal experiences that you have indeed encountered with black women who have wronged you, shamed you, or taken you, taken advantage of you, of you in some way. And you are using your platform as a playground for miserable black men who also share your same reasoning for your bitterness. So this is what I mean. For you to have this much grudges or animosity towards only black women, something has happened to you somewhere. Starting with, it could be your own mother who birthed you. Let's face it, just like you got a lot of women out here with daddy issues, let's not act like these some of these black men, some of these brothers don't have mommy issues. Let's not act like it. You have a few men who have been very transparent. With the first black woman who was supposed to love and nurture them, abuse them. DMX, the rapper, God bless his soul, was one of the few that was very transparent. Even uh, athlete Ocho, Chad Ocho Cinco, did not have a positive relationship with his black mother. Okay, so shout outs to the black men who have been very transparent and not worrying about nobody looking at them as a simp or a softy for saying that I am the way that I am because I did not give the love. I did not get the love from who I needed it from, which was my own black mother. A lot of you men that are uh, that, that are so consumed with raging against black women, a lot of it has to deal with your own mother failed you. Your own, that was the first black woman you saw when God brought you in this world was your own black mother. And it's very painful. When the one black woman who was to show was supposed to show you more love than anything rejected you. Why? Maybe because your father failed her. And she takes all that frustration and anger out on you because you look like that man who failed her. You got ways like that man who failed her. And it's not your fault. That's just part of your DNA. We all got similarities to our parents. I got ways like my mama. I got ways like my daddy. I hear people tell me all the time, you look like your daddy, but you act like your mama. And then I've been told, I got ways like my daddy. Like my daddy is zero nonsense, does not like foolishness. I got it honest. And my mother, I got her loud mouth. I'm going to get you right together. So all of us got ways like our parents. But you have a lot of these toxic black mothers who have punished their own sons for having ways like the man they chose to have birth from. It's not your fault that your mother chose a loser who you look like, who you resemble, who you got ways from. She chose that man to produce you from, and yet she's punishing you for it. You have a lot of these classic women, and when I say classic, I mean like women over the age of 60 who hate their own black sons and have even said it. Boy, you're going to be just like your daddy. Boy, you sorry just like your daddy. Boy, you a zero just like your daddy. I'm sure it's a lot of you black men out there. Your mama done told you you wasn't going to be shit before you knew what shit was. And that makes you angry. So when you see other black women who sit up here and push these narratives that men ain't shit, it pisses you off because it takes you back to your childhood when you was told from your mother that you wasn't going to be shit. 
So anytime you see a black woman have any type of, of, of aggression and your black mother had that aggression, it automatically makes you build up this rare rage to where you waiting for this black woman to get out of hand because you want to take your frustration out on this black woman because you never could do it with your own mama. Let's keep it 100. A lot of you black men are angry with your mama because she disappointed you, she hurt you, she rejected you, she told you you wasn't going to be shit. So anytime you hear a black woman talking reckless about black men, it takes you back to that space and that place in which your mother told you you wasn't going to be nothing. So because of that, you have built up this red pill rage shell. To where it has made you a ticking time bomb specifically for black women. Because you don't do, you don't implode on white women. You don't implode on other women of other races. And a lot of it, it's starting from your mama. DMX did not know how to love any woman. His mother verbally and physically abused him. And no matter, DMX was married, had a wife, had children. It was not enough to soothe him from the pain of his own mother. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of us as black women, we're never going to win your love and attention enough because you're still angry with your goddamn mama. I said what I said. Ain't enough black women who can sit up here and compliment you and say, uh, uh, marry you, love you, have your children. You still going to feel like, you know, you're not going to value us enough because the love you really wanted should have came from your mama. And she never gave you that. So if you never got help or you never resolved these issues and I married you or had children from you, I would never be able to complete you enough, brother man. Because the love you want is from the woman who's probably dead. You know, some of y'all black mothers died with not apologizing to y'all for what she did to you. So you still holding on to anger from a woman who's never coming back from the grave to apologize and say, son, I'm sorry I wronged you. I'm sorry that I did not give you the love that you needed to give. I'm sorry I'm the reason you have so many grudges and animosity towards black women because I was the first black woman in your life who did not give you the love and the support and the nurturing that you needed. You still mad with mama, and mama been in the grave over 30, 40 years. Now your first wife had to pay for it, your second wife, then your third baby mama over here. All women are paying the price for the woman who rejected you. And never apologize. She died not taking accountability for how she treated you. You're going to have to get some counseling. You're going to have to find a way to find closure for yourself, sir. Cause taking that raging out on, on other black women, that'll cure you for that'll get make you feel good for the moment, but you're still gonna be empty. If you didn't have a black mother who passed away, maybe she was on drugs, or maybe um all the hell she took you through, uh it, it cost her to to lose you know, uh lose her life early. Cause she never repented and made peace with God. So God decided to call her home early. Whatever the case is, some of you men are still mad with your mamas who've been in the grave over 30 years. Miss Helen is not coming back. You need to find peace with what your mother has done to you because you're going to leave this earth angry and bitter and hostile just like your mother. If not that, some of y'all, y'all mothers gave y'all up for adoption. I, I have spoken to many men, even when I was in the criminal justice system, a lot of the offenders, uh, they mothers gave them up to other family members. It's, and, and this is a, a, one of the big pieces as to why you have some of these men who got so much animosity towards black women. Their own black mothers gave them up. You know, so a lot of these men was not raised by their mothers. And, I, and I'm seeing that a lot now, this younger generation. I'm seeing it's the grandmothers raising them. Either their mother is incarcerated, dead, or on drugs, you know, in the streets. The grandmother had to take over and raise them. Um, I've seen a lot of these young men, they aunts are raising them. I've seen some of these young men, their own sisters are raising them. A, a lot of black women, a lot of us who are the oldest because I'm the oldest um, some of us had to take the role of being the mother due to the fact that the black mom failed us as 
mothers and we automatically was passed down that baton do y'all not realize how many black women had to take the the place of black mothers and become a black mother you got a lot of black women who are sisters having to raise their brothers as their sons why because mama wanted to prostitute wanted to be on drugs or she put her man first and if that meant neglecting her children in the process you know or um, she knew her husband or boyfriend was molesting her children, her daughters. And when our daughter got old enough to run away from home, she left. The brother came behind, you know. So it's, it's a lot of black women being ridiculed. And we are constantly being scrutinized and attacked. But what's not being told is that a lot of us had to take on the role of becoming mothers because our own mothers failed us. Nobody talks about that. Y'all come on these panels day in and day out talking about black women ain't shit, we ain't this, we ain't that. But what a lot of y'all ain't understanding, a lot of us had to take on adult roles and became mothers before we had our own children. I'm not talking about the fast ones, you know, who been screwing and, and you know, uh, letting dudes run trains on them under the bleachers in middle school. I ain't talking about the young women who was promiscuous and got multiple baby daddies and stuff. I'm talking about black women who have had to take the role of, of our black mothers who was not stepping up who was not nurturing I know a lot of women who had to raise their brothers and you know what And uh, some of these guys out here they'll tell you it was my sister who raised me not my mama you know it was my aunt who raised me and believe it or not no matter how much love the sister showed no matter how much love the aunt showed whoever that woman who adopted them from the adoption agency showed these men are still angry with their own black mothers because this is the thing about it a lot of men cannot phantom a woman not wanting her own child and the reason for that is because by nature women we're the ones who have children we're the ones who get impregnated so for most men Men cannot understand how mothers can mentally and physically detach themselves from not wanting their own children. And I'm going to let you men know, it happens more frequently than what y'all think. It happens more calmly than what y'all think. Don't think it's just men who can walk away from their own kids. You have mothers who do it, yes. You have some women who can go a whole nine months, throwing up, going to doctor's visits, all of that, and the baby gets here, they don't want it. I know y'all don't want to believe that because we women and it's the sexist attitude that women should all women should want their kid no matter what even if the father walks away it's it's a common myth that is normal for a man to walk away and detach himself from a child but when a woman does it she's uh, the worst in the world and me i have a problem when either do it i have a problem with men walking away from their children i have a problem with mothers walking away from their children but a lot of men are angry because they can't understand. Why would a woman not want her own child? Guess what? Women can have babies and don't want them, okay? You heard it here first. Make no mistake about it. For some women, it ain't about food stamps or child support. They can have a baby and don't want it. They'll go through all that hell of carrying it, all that hell of, you know, having to go through those hours of labor and then they get here, they don't want it. And they don't feel bad about it. They don't feel guilty about it. That child has to go to the next of kin. That child has to be adopted. That child is already um, being cheated as soon as he or she comes out the womb. And the problem is a lot of these black men have been cheated before they got out the womb. So now, not only that, you know, like I said, that's the first factor. A lot of them, their own mamas done failed them. They still mad with their mamas. All right. Some of these men in their 40s and 50s still don't know who their mama is, still don't get along with their mama, or they know who their mama is, but she dead and gone, and he can't, she ain't here for him to go off on her and say, um, you wasn't a mother, you wasn't there. He has to hold all his animosity and anger and hostility because he never was able to make peace and tell his mother that she was wrong for not being a mother to him. So... That's the first thing the mother felt. Then the second issue why a lot of these men have so many issues with black women. And like I said, I'm going to get on the black women. Why they got issues with black men as well. Hold on to your seat belts, okay? For you count me out and you walk out the room. The other issue is the animosity that some women, black men have for black women is because of the type of black women they chose. 
Last time I checked, black women ain't the only ones who 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 is failing at choosing the right person to build a family with. A lot of you brothers out here slipping. Y'all are out here impregnating women um, who aren't mother material, who aren't wife material. A lot of y'all are not using condoms. You're not protecting your man down there. You let your you let your 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 uh you let your body count make you think that you have defined masculinity because you've been taught through the streets, you've been taught through the barbershops, and now thanks to social media, Instagram and, and damn Facebook ain't made it no better, and these male and he and these and, and these um red pill raging man of spill whatever, they ain't made it no better either. Um a, a lot of y'all are mad with women y'all chose. But y'all want to keep pointing at black women, saying black women, um, we keep picking up uh, garbage, bottom of the barrel. But I've seen a couple of you brothers pick up garbage too. I don't see y'all pick up dumpster. Y'all been dumpster diving. Let me tell you men something. Y'all been dumpster diving. Shout out to a lot of the men who've been inboxing me saying mocha. You ain't lying. I messed up. I, I picked up some some birds back in my day. The truth is, um, you do have a lot of men out here who have a lot of hostility towards women simply based off the fact that they have a toxic, unhealthy relationship with their baby mama. And especially if they got more than one baby mama, and each one is black, he's automatically going to make that assumption because he has more than one black baby mama that all black women want is money and use their children as a meal ticket. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and act like there's not black women out here who do this. I call it the broke broad hustle. You do have women who would intentionally try to secure the bag by having children for men who they feel are financially fit who can supply them with a lifestyle but the problem is the guys that have put themselves in the situation and are suffering suffering the ramifications of the child support system the family courts they are very angry towards black women because Basically, they chose to bear children from these type of females who did not want a family. These women who they did not make their wives. These are women who they made their baby mama. That's why I have a problem with men around here discouraging other men from marriage. What is better? You know, if push come to shove, it's better for a woman who you at least chose as your wife to benefit from you versus multiple baby mamas who never really had to do anything much but get pregnant from you to still financially benefit or don't get married at all it is what it is you know be a bachelor whatever but you have a lot of men who cannot stand black women because all of their baby mamas are black and they are infuriated with the fact that the type of black women they chose to have children from are making their lives miserable these are the ones that are hanging out in the man of spirit spaces. These are the ones that are hanging out in the red pill spaces. These are the ones who need that bitter black man empowerment because um, they need another brother who can understand their pain. Yeah, these black bitches ain't shit. All they want is money. You know, they lazy and they, you know, trying to secure the bag so the government could take care of them. But we as black men, we can't lean on the government to take care of us. You know, the government is making it too easy for these black women. You know, as if other women ain't getting child support, but you know, it's us. That's all these black women want. They just go diggers, da 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 Dude, be honest with you. Be honest with yourself. You tell black women to take accountability all the time, and I agree with that. Some of you dudes got to take accountability. In the words of, you know, BBD, Belle Biv DeVoe, never trust a big butt and a smile. 
A lot of you guys, y'all, you get in these chat rooms caping for these brothers who be talking about how black women ain't sugar honey iced tea. Black women just want money. But guess what? You ain't think all of you ain't thought none about that when that big old fat booty was in your face, jiggling like a milk vanilla milkshake from Burger King. You did not think about none of that. Because guess what? It was your man downstairs that was doing the thinking for you. You was thinking with the wrong head. Don't don't get in these chat rooms caping and celebrating every time one of these red pill of Mammal Spill brothers start going in on, on, on black women only want child support. Listen, you ain't thought about none of that when you was hitting that from the back. When you was letting her ride you, slide you, and glide you, you ain't thought about no child support. You were so happy to get in between those thighs, you know, uh, you, all, all your common sense went out the door. But y'all in here caping and clapping and chanting that black women ain't sugar honey iced tea, but yet you go after these kind of women. You don't got the women who want something out of life, who want a family, not just a baby daddy, because she ain't pretty enough, she ain't attractive enough. No, you went after Big Booty Judy. And you mad because Big Booty Judy done filed that child support that's faithfully coming out your check every month, and it's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And yet, you seeing your child look like they're from a third world country while her hair is done, her nails is done. Yes, this is enough to infuriate a black man into hating black women when he realizes all of his checks have to go towards all of his black baby mamas. That's enough to make any black man bitter, hostile, and angry. And some of you, you just got one black baby mama that's making your life a living hell. She's making your life miserable. And you're mad at all black women who got nothing to do with it. So as soon as one of these male content creators decide to do a topic about child support and how black women abuse the system, y'all the main ones that are thumbing the video up, liking the video, you know why? Because you can relate to um, the bitterness of the male content creator who's teaching it. Because either he's experienced, he's experienced it himself or he knows other men who are experiencing it. And what these black male content creators, the manosphere, the red pill, they are capitalizing off of the emotions and bitterness of black men. They know all they got to do is talk badly about black men, I mean black women, and you black men that are butt hurt because you got to pay all this child support and because you got all these mommy issues. Y'all are the main ones that are, 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 are throwing confetti in, in, in the red pill spaces. You know, in the Man of Spirit chat room. If not that, a lot of y'all got hostility against black women because the black women you wanted did not want you. It's a, it, we, we act like rejection is only a problem black women got. And, and trust and believe, I'm going to go to the sisters in a few minutes. Okay, right now I'm going in on y'all, all right? So, um, you have a lot of black men that are still angry that they was rejected at the prom. You know, um, all, all of us back in the day, and I can even say I'm guilty, it was always those ugly, you know, those ugly, um, less fortunate, less facially challenged dudes back in middle school and elementary who was trying so hard to get girls to like them. We all know that dude, okay? You know, it was always that one boy that was crusty. His nose always had crust around it. Or either he always smelled pissy. You know, let's face it. Some of these black men were born and raised in poverty, okay? They did not have the best of clothes. They did not have the, the best of things, you know. So when they came to the school, when they went to school, when they was in elementary, middle school, a lot of the pretty little girls with the with the with the long cute um ponytails, you know, um, they would like these type of girls. And, you know, little girls back then, you know, until you mature, you're mean, you're vicious, and you're very direct. And all of us gave these guys all of us gave these, you know, little boys certain names. You would know him as the booger boy who always had boogers or, you know, the pissy the pissy boy, you know, or patches. You know, the boy who always wore, you know, patches in his pants because 
his mom and dad couldn't afford, you know, to buy him the new Jordash. I think back then we used to rock Jordash or whatever, but he, he, he was in poverty. Maybe he was raised by a single mom himself who could not afford to give him the best of things. Or uh, maybe he had a father who didn't make a lot of money. There was a father in the home. But we used to call him patches because he used to patch up the holes in his pants versus buying brand new pants, you know. Um, uh, I would say childhood is probably one of the most cruelest experiences for many of us as black men and black women, you know. Um, any of these men who have experienced in their boyhood or childhood being made fun of, being ridiculed, these are the same little boys who now, in some cases, most cases, are now successful because they took all that pain, shame, and poverty and used it to motivate them to get their own businesses. Some of them use that pain to motivate them to, to build their own podcasts. Um, some of these guys are content creators. Don't think these guys that shit on black women so much wasn't once upon a time Mr. Patches, Pissy Boy, Booger Nose Boy. Um, if you can go back in their history, and some of them was even considered one of the girls, okay? Some of y'all favorite content creators back then during their adolescence or during their childhood struggled with sexuality have very feminine ways, you know, we all knew a drill, you know, all, all of us knew that one, you know, gay black man, black, gay black boy who could never really fit in with the boys, he could never be on a sports team because he acted a little feminine, so he was rejected by um, the athletic guys, you know, the athletic boys who shoot hoops and play football, he couldn't fit in with them, so... Um, because he had feminine ways, he moved his hands a certain way, or he walked a certain way, you know, or he dressed a little too classy all the time where it, 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 it gave off that feminine energy. Um, he had to hang out with the girls, you know, and none of the girls was checking for him like that because um, they considered him, you know, little tutti fruity. you know what I'm saying? So... Uh, you have some of these black men who are now content creators, who are now red pill. They will not really discuss with you their elementary, middle school, or high school experiences because it could be very embarrassing. Some of these guys who act so masculine today, if you knew people who went to high school or middle school or elementary with them, will tell you, Oh, oh, Big Kev, oh, Big Kev, he wasn't always Big Kev back in the day. He used to be Sweet Kev back in elementary school, middle school. You know, it's a lot of these guys, they don't discuss how they were raised. A lot of these guys don't discuss their hometown. They don't discuss where they really come from. I know Kevin Samuels never really talked about his childhood at all. He never discussed how he got along with men or women um, during his duration of his young life, you know. And truth is, a lot of these guys, and I'm not just picking on him, a lot of these guys are, are afraid or, or they don't have the courage to tell men today how they was not always perceived as this masculine type of man. Yes, you see the suits right now. You, you, see, you see them in the content wearing expensive designer clothes, expensive baseball caps, expensive jerseys. If they're not wearing expensive jerseys and baseball caps, you see them wearing expensive suits, expensive gator shoes. But if you knew them from back in the day, you would know there was either Patches, a Booger Boy, or a Pissy Paul. They was one of them, you know, or, they, or, or Poverty Pookie. You know, um, they didn't, they wasn't nowhere near successful, but all of their experiences is the reason why some of these black men are successful. They came from the struggle. And they never want to be perceived as pissy boy, booger boy. All of the negative things that they were taunted as during their youth as a young man. Believe it or not, now that these guys are successful, they got podcasts, they making money, they got their own businesses, some are even married now, some are millionaires, some are athletes, some are rappers, you know, um, they, they use their pain for their gain by becoming successful. 
That's why they got the room now so they feel to attack black women. Because back in the day when they was a nobody, nobody was checking for them. Every girl they invited to the prom said no. Remember when he used to send those letters, do you like me, yes or yes? She would make her own box and check off, hell no. <laughs> so, he never got any attention from the girls. Listen, these guys are not going to be honest and transparent because it comes off as simpish. Um, and plus, that would be admitting that's why they're a little bitter towards black women. So a lot of them are not going to say, the black women used to shit on me back in the day. They used to reject me back in the day. Every girl I asked to the prom or asked out, they told me I was too short, too skinny, um, too dark, too fat, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Um, or too poor because you didn't wear the, the, the duck heads and Jordash and whatever and name brands, Levi's they had back then. So, a lot of these, some of these black men, not all, again, if it doesn't apply, you don't have to reply. They're still traumatized for how black women used to pick on them. They're still angry about that one pretty light-skinned girl who they wanted so badly who did not want them. And Lord, if they were to run into her years down the line and see she's big as a 1970 city bus, and now that they're wearing their suits or they're wearing expensive baseball caps, now they feel like this is their moment to get back. Oh, that was uh, the, the girl that I used to check for who's now built, you know, like a transmission, you to an Astro van. Oh, uh, now, now you feel like you big dog because you see um, your secret admirer, you know, has gained 400 pounds since then. You know, so um, a lot of these guys, you know, that have had some form of rejection, whether if it's from their mother, rather if it's from the women they wanted but couldn't afford, the women they liked didn't feel like they was on their level, so the women didn't get them the attention they wanted, or they are in misery because their baby mamas got them hemmed up financially to where he pretty much has no control over his finances, the government does, because the baby mama filed child support. A lot of these men are caping out in the man of spear, red pill, rage spaces. That they're seeking empowerment for their bitterness. And my thing is this, you know, um, until that brother really makes the ultimate decision to go heal, he can listen to these man of spear, love gurus, red pill, rage, whatever, you know, a uh, 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 content creator he admires that helps to lick his wounds. That helps to lick his wounds. In other words, makes him feel better about justifying the reasons why he should continue to hate black women. He's never going to grow. He's never going to get healed. You know, um, he's going to continue to allow his resentment towards black women to become a crutch to him to where anytime he's around the presence of one he's looking you know he already is it, it, it has his guns in a chamber ready to fire up because again he wants to keep relinquishing he wants to keep putting out that get back for the black women who failed him or the black women who rejected him so you got dudes like this who are all for the gender war. They love it. It's like an adrenaline rush. They love to be in spaces where black women are being dragged because to him, that's giving him some relief knowing that there are other men out there who share his bitterness just as much. Okay? So now we're going to go to the sisters. The bitter sisterhood committee. Yes. You got a lot of broken, bitter black women who have learned to vacation in spaces in which um, black women eat black men up for breakfast. You know, um, these spaces are anti-black men. And the truth is, a lot of these women who hate black men, it didn't stop them from having children from black men. 
A lot of these women who, can't, who claim they hate black men is not stopping them from trying to smash black men who are, especially who are successful, who got money, who they feel like they could benefit from. So as much as some of these sisters, the, the bitter, broken sisterhood, it, it's so supportive of sisters who push this narrative, narrative that black men are garbage, yet they be fornicating with these men. They, they don't require these men to marry them, to wife them. A man can get away with buying him some Hennessy, a two-piece, and a biscuit, and she's smashing him, bringing him back to her Section A apartment and smashing him. But this would be the sister that 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 are going to these bitter sisterhood spaces and be caping hard anytime a black woman has something negative to say about black men. Yeah, these black men don't take care of their children. These black men are all accountability. Well, the truth is, you know, um, you have a lot of sisters out here who play these games. And sometimes when you got here and you play stupid games, you end up with stupid prizes. And you have women who play Russian roulette with their wounds. Um, they, they go out here getting involved with these men and, and not really requiring any uh standards so it's gotten to a point to now where um you have a, a lot of these women who are already broken because just like the black men i stated earlier um you have a lot of black women out here who got mommy issues and daddy issues just like i said for those who just coming in um, I did talk about the issues with black men. I'm talking about black men and black women. So you got to watch the whole video for you coming here th just siding. Okay, so. Nevertheless, you got women who were raised in households in which um, they did not have the best example as mothers. You either had a mother that was hands-on, raised you, taught you how to be domestic, taught you how to cook clean, be catering, um, submissive, not a slave, there's a difference. And, you know, was, was taught taught their daughters, you know, you might have had a mother that taught you how to be submissive without being a slave. Um, to be a mother, not just being a friend. You know, um, some of us was fortunate enough to have mothers who really gave us the balance we needed to where um, we didn't have this attitude where I don't need a man, I don't want a man, or whatever the case is. But we were taught to respect that a man has a role as a husband and a woman has a role as a wife. And you was raised under a mother with those type of morals. Nine times out of ten, you'll be a, a lot more balanced. Now, on the other hand, you got a lot of broken black women who was raised under the guidance of other broken black women. A mother cannot teach you what she does not know. A lot of black women have been deprived from the date of birth because the truth is, Every woman who births a child is not a mother. I know a lot of black women to this day that hate their mothers. I know black women to this day who don't talk to their mothers. I know black women who don't have a relationship with their mama. And it has really impacted how she perceives herself as a woman. And let me tell you something. Just like a lot of you black men were told as little boys that you ain't shit by your toxic m black mama. You think black women haven't experienced their own black mother telling them you ain't shit? You gonna be a hoe because your grandmother was a hoe or I used to be a hoe? Nobody's not gonna marry you. Nobody married me. Nobody married your your grandmother. Um, Some, of, some black women have been raised under toxic, bitter black women that have already told them that she would never stand a chance. And the reason she poisons, you have a lot of these toxic black mothers who poison and toxic black daughters is because they feel they have already failed in life. And they are afraid that their daughter may accomplish something that they didn't get a chance to accomplish. So what they do is already stunt 
their growth, stunt their dreams by saying, you ain't going to have nothing because I don't have nothing. You got black women who have already raised their daughters to be failures. If somebody keeps telling you verbally, you ain't going to be shit, you ain't got shit because I ain't got shit. If you hear that all the time, you're going to believe it. Got a lot of these older women who are reformed, um, who are has been hood rats. I won't say reformed because a lot of them are still hood rats. You got these has been hood rats who are old, who are now up in their age, who think they can redeem their hoish behavior by now being an usher, be being an usher in a church now, who think they can hide from their horrorism through religion. You know, and there's nothing wrong with finding God, but at the same time, you got to find accountability and change your life versus just running to religion and not making any changes and not acknowledging or owning um, how you live was not the right way. So, you have women who got mommy issues. They own mommy mothers, they can't stand them. I know many of women right now, they don't deal with their mama. They don't have a good relationship with their mom. They, you know, their mother's negative. Maybe because she married and her mother's not married. And her mother's low-key hating on that. You know, you'll be surprised. You have a lot of black women who got unhealthy relationships with their mother. And that has a lot to do, you know, that's one of the factors as to why uh, so many black women are bitter. You know, your own mom. Your mom is supposed to be like your friend, your homegirl. And you'll be surprised how many women don't have that. They don't have their own mamas, you know. They can't call their mama when they're going through something. They, 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 or if they do got a mama, their mama give them toxic teachings. They call their mama, hey, mom, you know, me and my, my boyfriend, me and my husband, we just kind of going through a rough patch in our marriage right now. I could really use some encouragement. Girl, that's why I'm by myself. Girl, that's why I left your daddy. I don't know why you think you're going to get something out of him. He just going to be just like your daddy was. I mean... You know, uh, you have some black women who really have no place to go. You know, um, they don't have that support like you think. Um, you have a lot of black women. They don't have a mama. And what I mean by they don't have a mother, yeah, their mother could be living, um, but it doesn't mean they got a mama. You know, some, some black mothers are very toxic. If not that, her mother passed away, and she passed away on bad terms. Um, they didn't have a good relationship and she's still struggling with that. Um, or like I said earlier with, with black men, uh, you have black women who've been adopted, you know, um, given up. Mother was strung out on drugs or the mother was so into wanting a man. Um, she knew that man didn't want to be responsible for her kids. So she got rid of her kids. So she had that man, a big, big, big issue that's not being discussed is a lot of black women have been molested. There's a lot of black women who are full of hostility, anger, and um, resentment due to the fact that there was that one black man. It was that one black man who took advantage of her. That one uncle that used to stay the night sometimes. Um, that one male cousin or worst case scenario her mother's boyfriend her mother's husband her stepfather or in some cases her own biological father tampered with her youth you have a lot of black women that have been introduced to a penis before they were six years old they already got to taste another man's genitals before she even knew the true meaning and, 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 and the delicacy of sex and intimacy. You, you got black women who before they even understood what the purpose of having a mouth was, they have already used it on that perverted ass uncle, that perverted ass boyfriend who stroked it in her mouth. Yes, this is harsh reality. But I need y'all to understand why black men and black women got so much hostility going on. See, this is a serious thing. People just want to say black women crazy. 
What is she crazy for? What happened? Let's get down to the, the bottom of the source. She's not crazy just to be crazy. Now, you do got something that's crazy as hell. Now, ain't nothing happening to them. I don't want uh, people, black women who haven't experienced this type of trauma lying and using this as an excuse to be vindictive, hateful, and, and just messy. The truth is, all women have not experienced this that type of trauma. I was one fortunate not have experienced it, but I know many women who have. So you do got some women that is just mean and nasty just to be mean and nasty, not because something happened to them. But in many cases, you got a lot of sisters who done been tried. Four or five years old, you're not supposed to know what a man's dick looks like unless you actually uh, accidentally walked in the bathroom with your daddy who ain't locked the door and saw it by accident. But no you want young woman under the age of 18 against her will anyway should have to experience what a man tastes like and what a man feels like if that man was not her husband or her companion and she was not old enough to consent to that type of sexual uh, um, 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 misdeed that was done to her. This is a very sensitive subject. You got a lot of black women walking around here holding grudges, hating all black men because her own black mother failed her by not believing in her. She didn't have a voice back then. That's why you got some black women, now that they do have a voice, they don't know when to tone it down. They don't know when to speak, when to be quiet because they had to be quiet. They was told what goes on in this house stays in this house. Or when you did tell your mama about that uncle or that boyfriend who touched you, girl, that didn't happen to you. Black women was already told we was liars at the age of four or five years old when what child would lie about Uncle Ricky put his penis on my, and we put his wee-wee, because we didn't call it penis back then. Uncle uh, Uncle Ricky put his wee-wee in my mouth. Uncle Uncle Willis made me touch his um. His um wee wee and he touched my cool cool. You know that that toxic mother said, Girl, that ain't happening to you. Get out my face. Go sit down somewhere. And knowing every time you sit to the dinner table, you're eating with a man who is touching you and you're just a child and you can't do shit about it. That's why you got so many sisters around here who are angry and hateful. Didn't get no counseling for it. Wasn't her. That's why you got some women who snap when, they, when they're when they being told they are a liar. Because they've been told they've been a liar even as a child. When they had no reason to lie about what Uncle Ricky did. Okay? So, not only that. You have a, 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 a lot of women who have... Um, who have had to, to, to face the harsh realities of becoming a mother at a young age. Now, in some cases, it was against their will. If they were molested or, you know, sexually taken advantage of, that was not their fault, of course. But you have some young, some black women who have learned how to be promiscuous during their childhood that have followed them all the way to their adulthood. Um, you have some women who have normalized having sex with multiple men especially if she's been tampered with um if, if she, that uncle or the father stepfather told her if you love me you would do this that's programmed in her psyche that anytime she meets a man who she likes she feels like she has to allow him to sexually take advantage of her because that is her way of showing him that she loves him some some women's uh, a broken woman's psyche is just that damaged she feel like the only way um, she's going to find love through a man is through his penis. You got some grown women who have still not figured out that having sex with a man would, does not mean that man is going to wife you, marry you, or respect you. Not only that, having a kid from that man is not going to make him wife you or respect you. A lot of women have been taught, have been misinformed about sex. If she was raised by a toxic mother, maybe that toxic mother told her, girl, if you want some money, you got, hey, closed legs don't get fed. Or she was street taught. 
by other females who who had that hood red mindset. Girl, you got to you got to do what you got to do to get what you want. Again, you have women who've been introduced to sex at an age in which they weren't fully mentally developed. And that's why you got some women women that that look like women. Yeah, she got the big tits, she got the big ass, but when you talk to her, you notice her mindset. She talks like a little girl. Maybe because it has to do with the fact that she was touched during her um, adolescent or during her childhood. And what happens when somebody tampers with your youth at an age in which you were not fully developed, you get stuck at that age. So if you were, if your if your innocence was tampered with at nine years old, you may be a forty year old woman and still talk like you nine, or you 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 you'll say things like a nine year old would, because. Your mindset is stuck from that uh that that age in which your 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 your, 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 your innocence was tampered with. Um, also, oh, interesting. Um, also, um, 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 getting back to my point at hand, it's crazy. Something that just got my attention because. Uh, you know, I used to work at the jail and one of the inmates that had unalive two individuals, I see his trial is coming up and, um, it was very, very messed up. He unalive a man and his wife and robbed them and the wife ended up living, but the husband died and he was a really good black man. He was taking care of his family, raising his children and he unalived them. So why you got black men around here worrying about black women being their worst enemy you got other black men got to be cautious of other black men you know and it just was a very sad situation y'all but i'll talk about that another time that that was one of those cases that really pulled out my heartstrings so anyway i'll talk about it another time but it just popped up on my app and stuff that his trial is coming up but anyway so you have um you have a lot of black women going around here being angry uh, with black men because she never got counsel, never got help from the black men who she should have trusted and they took advantage of her. Um, to the next point, as I was saying um, before I digressed, um, a lot of black women chose the wrong type of men to have children from. That has a lot of women angry. These are the women that are caping out in the bitter sisterhood spaces. They're hanging out with the black women who talk about how black men don't care for their kids. Only because they can relate because they have chosen to have children for men who they know was ain't shit dudes. You know, a, a lot of women, um, they try to trap these dudes in many cases and end up trapping themselves. Now, I know you got some dudes out here who will lie, who will deceive you. Even the smartest woman, we're not going to catch on to all the games. But for the most part, a lot of these women deal with these type of guys and see by the life that they live, see he already has multiple baby mamas, see that he's still living with his mama, see that he doesn't like to work, see that every time she wants to see him, she has to pick him up in her car. She sees the dude is struggling and sees he's in poverty, in poverty, but then is angry when this man does not come through for her child. Um, in many cases, these men you, that they choose are losers. And then they have the nerve to act surprised when they end up losing. Um, a lot of black women, let's face it, they're not, we're not making the best of decisions when it comes to baby daddies. And the bad part about it is you got a lot of sisters out here who try to discourage women from marriage. Yes, I know marriage doesn't solve everything. I know marriage doesn't mean you're not going to have ups and downs, that your husband going to be 100% faithful. But what's worse, going around here collecting different baby daddies, having more, more different babies with different last names from different men, versus if you was going to go through all that hell, you would have been better off going through all of it with just one person. Versus you got to deal with baby daddy number one, who don't like to work, Baby daddy number two, who will work, but he wants nothing to do with the child. Baby daddy number three, who's already married and has a family, so he really don't want much to do. I mean, who want to go through these different personalities with these different bum-ass dudes? 
And some women, they don't even make the mistake once. They done made it four or five times. I'm listening. No joke. I was on Facebook and one of these girls posted how all her baby daddies are baby deep. Uh, all of all four of her baby daddies are baby deep. Are, are dead beats. All four of her baby daddies are dead beats. I was getting tongue tied. <laughs> so I looked under the comments. A lot of women went underneath saying the same thing. Girl, all three of mine, they dead beats too. One of them said, all oh, six of mine are dead beats. I'm like, wait a minute. You didn't learn from the first one being a dead beat. Let's say if it's if it's not the same dude, why would you take a chance with another dude but and, and, and put yourself in that same situation? I ain't trying to be funny. Some black women will never learn. It's called stupidity. Repeating the same mistake and expecting different results, a different outcome. Some, some of these women, they never learn. But you know what they'll do? Instead of learning and, and doing some self-evaluation, getting some counseling, getting some therapy, the, the, the find, the, the, uh, to, to mentally um, get some clarity as to why they keep making these same bad decisions over and over and over. You know what they'll do? They'll go hang out in the Bitter Sisterhood Committee. They'll, they'll become part of the the bitter black woman cheerleading team. They're the ones in the comment section. Every time the, the, the anti-hate black man female creator goes in on how black men ain't shit, guess what? She's clapping. Yeah, you're right. They ain't shit even though I chose all five of them to be my baby daddies. I'm trying to understand the irony of why how black women think like this. How is it all five baby daddies, they ain't shit? All of them and nothing is wrong with you. Your own baby dad, number three, number four. All of them are losers. What does that say about you and your, your mentality when it comes to the type of men you choose? You keep picking up losers, you're going to lose. But these are the ones that hang out in the bitter sisterhood spaces praising black women who are condoning black men but ain't making other black women responsible and i'm not gonna knock all black female content creators because you do got some of these women who go in and tell black women sis you should have known better sis you can't be sitting up here picking up these bum ass dudes and thinking you're going to get on the come up sis you do have some black women who keep it a hundred and they don't support these bitter black women delusions. I'm one. I'm not going to support it. I'm not going to say, oh, sis, you good to go. You got four or five baby daddies. You still a queen. No, you a peasant. You haven't learned. And these are the main ones that want to come in the comment section talking reckless when you have women like me who don't agree with them. They'll call me a pick me. They'll call me, um, you know, a dick rider. All because I don't agree. I won't support hood rat shenanigans you know um i don't support the bit of black woman's delusions um i have had sisters come for me i've had um i had to block a few of them because you know their their hate for black men it, it is so that put it this way their hate for black men has become an obsession so the moment anybody says Anything about black women, they're, they're just as bad as the raging pit bull black men who got a problem with black women. They are no better. Um, bitter, miserable black women stay on attack mode. And this is not just something that they do towards black men they can't stand. Bitter black women will make problems for other black women who do not support the delusions, the shenanigans. I've had to block some of these sisters. Who want to come in my section. Well, why you ain't saying something about black men? If you don't take your bitter, hating black man ass on somewhere, get from out my space with that. Because if you've been following me, you know I go in on both over here. But your hate for black men has become such an obsession with you. Soon as you hear anything positive, anytime you hear any black woman says something positive about a black man, you ready to empty your clip. 
and call me all the, the B words, the pick me's. I don't argue with miserable black women. I don't have the room for miserable black women. A miserable black woman is going to find a way to shoot down anything you have to say. If you're not caping for her and making and, 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 and not holding her accountable, she's fine with you. She will cash out. She will support you. But any real black woman who wants to grow in life, she's willing to take the good with the bad. I've had some sisters tell me, girl, I done messed up, man. If I knew then what I knew now, I wouldn't have got all these baby daddies. I wouldn't have depended on the system. I've had some sisters keep it a buck with me and tell me, Mocha, you right. I can't even be mad at you. I was young and dumb. I didn't learn. Uh, Mocha, I got a daughter. I'm trying to tell her the same thing. Um, you got some black women who do not use their, their past, their poor choices. They don't use it as a crutch. They don't go around because I'm abused or because my baby daddies ain't shit. You know, I'm going to go around hating all black women. You, you It's the bitter black women who like to use their pain for gain. They want to gain empathy and sympathy. And, you know, it, it just doesn't fly well with me, especially when you keep making the same choices over and over. But you will catch the Bitter Sisterhood Committee hanging out with other bitter black women. That And that's all they do in the space all day is talk about black men all day. They don't talk about black women trying to earn their own, start their own businesses. They don't tell black women um, how to, to, to have better mothering skills, parental skills. All the hours y'all put on doing panels on talking about how black men ain't, ain't, ain't this and that, you could be helping black women to grow and to become something better. But let me tell you something. I understand why a lot of these sisters are doing that because the truth is a lot of these bitter black women, they don't want to learn anything. They just want to sit in, 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 the, in a meeting of misery and go back and forth about how black men ain't shit all day only to come and log off Still got to deal with not getting their child support on time. Still got to deal with they're not getting along with their baby daddy. So it, it, it's the this is what amazes me about a lot of these anti-black men and anti-black women spaces. Yes, you know, uh, doing the turn up, doing these live streams, doing this back and forth hiatus, it feels good listening to other people who support what you support, who hate what you hate who got something against the same group of people you got something against it feels good when we have somebody who support our delusions you know what feels better um i'm just gonna tell you sis instead of you being bitter and hateful and you know holding on to all this anger and animosity what you need to start doing is you need to start um going to the gym, exercising, you know, mentally, you know, um, putting, involving yourself in things that's going to make you a better woman versus sitting around here being bitter and angry towards men. You need to find something more fulfilling in your life other than listening to these female content creators just bash black men all day. Yes, it feels good, but what are you gaining from it? When you log off, did you start a new business? Are you in a better place with your baby daddies? Um, did you start a new nutrition program where your your eating habits have changed? What 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 is it about supporting this is helping you better? Oh, girl, F these niggas. We do what you do what you gotta do. And if they can't accept you for who you are, then later for these ninjas. What sounds better? That's what they want. They want a sister that's gonna support their delusions and tell them you ain't gotta change. You are perfectly fine the way you are. It's these black men who got the problem, sis. You don't have the problem. Even though you got four or five baby daddies, you ain't the problem. All four or five of your baby daddies is the problem. Same thing with these black men. You don't have any of these black male content creators telling these black men, man, what we need to do as men, and you may have some male content creators who do this, I don't know. That's why I'm not applying it to everybody. But man, instead of sitting around focusing on these women, having this barbershop talk about black women ain't this and black women is garbage and how you need to date outside your race, how about, you know, we, we talk about a nutrition program for black men to where we can get better eating habits to where we could avoid prostate cancer. Uh, where we can do better, uh, do classes on um, financial stability. You know, not 
having discipline, teach teach a man discipline to where they're not going around here having sex with multiple women and putting themselves in a lifetime of, de of child support. Um, no, it's not, it's not entertaining enough. No, we want to talk about how black women are bitches, black women are hoes, and black women are garbage. Y'all want to sit for two, three hours and go on and on about black women. And meanwhile, when you log off, how has it changed your life? When, it, when this person ends their live stream, when they end their channel, and you don't have your two, three hours of entertainment, okay, what have you learned? What did you get out of it besides the same stuff you've been getting, which is black women ain't shit. That's all you listen to day in and day out. And I realize the reason because of this, um, the gender war has become a safe haven because you got a lot of black men and black women who have been rejected. Who have been counted out. Who have been disappointed by the opposite sex at some point in time. And one thing, I know y'all heard the saying, misery loves company. But what has happened is, misery has come codependent on company. That's why you got these bitter black men who hate black women hanging out in spaces with content creators who teach it. Who celebrate, um, who celebrate the 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 um, the the negativity about black women? Same thing with black with, with, with black women. Um, they've been casted out. They've been let down. They have been mistreated by black men, whether it was their baby daddy, their father, or their mother's boyfriend who took advantage of them, and. They have allowed that hate to consume them to the point where they only want to hang in spaces with other women who can also relate and identify to that same pain and that same abuse. But my thing is this. If you keep hanging out with people who share your same pain, but they don't want to gain any growth, they don't want to gain any knowledge, what good is it? What happens is y'all continue to keep each other on the same level. It, it's like crabs in a barrel y'all kind of pulling each other down without even realizing it because once one of you wants to grow and say well i don't feel that way about black men oh hell no uh-uh you gotta got get up out of here you know no 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 you're doing black male worshiping we ain't doing that get get on uh -uh. get get your pick me patricia ass up out of here no different if a black man well i don't think all black women nigga you sipping you cupcaking we don't need no Mr. Softies. We don't need no softies, self-serve niggas up in this space. This is the man of spill. Okay? Uh, mega tile, red pill, blue pill, whatever. You don't belong in here. Go play for the pink team. When you start to grow, people eliminate you. Okay? Long as you stay stagnant in the same beliefs, the same morals, everybody's cool. Like I said, a lot of these individuals, they are congregating in these spaces because it has become a safe haven. And what have I said to y'all before? Hate makes you feel safe. Listen, as long as I don't like you, right? As long as I have programmed myself not to like you because, I, because of what I've gone through with people that are similar to you, it makes me feel empowered. It makes me feel like I have some kind of control. When I hate something. Because as long as I hate you, I ain't got to deal with you. I ain't got to learn from you. I ain't got to be inspired by you. And most importantly, I ain't got to respect you. A lot of people like to hate because hate gives you a pass. Hate tells you, I don't like that person, so I ain't got to respect them. I don't like that person, so I don't have to listen to their viewpoints, even if it makes perfect sense. I don't like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't respect women i don't respect men so i ain't got to listen to what i don't respect and what a lot of y'all what a lot of y'all are not understanding um y'all have mentally incarcerated yourselves with this gender war thinking a lot of y'all have missed out on blessings because if you wasn't such a bitch or you wasn't such an asshole it's a people who's the opposite sex who could be of benefit to you because you're so disrespectful to black women, you're going to miss out on a black woman who could be a good wife, who could be a good mother. You're so hateful and disrespectful to black men, so you're going to miss out on a good black man who could be a good husband, who could be a good father to your children. A, a lot of y'all, y'all love the hate because it makes you feel safe. 
And all it's doing is it's keeping you confined. It's incarcerating you. You can't be free. You can't grow. A lot of y'all been following the same content creators for years. No growth. And for some of you, you know, in your mind, you feel this person, this anti-hating black woman man has really changed your life. Some of you women feel like this anti-hating black man, man, woman really changed your life. Um, sometimes people can lead you, but they can lead you to destruction. So you got to be careful who you allow in your ear gate, who you allow to lead you. Um, gender war has become a safe haven for rejected individuals. Anytime I do these drive-bys and I listen to these guys going in on black women on the panel all day and the hostess he's sitting there entertaining it for views and cash apps it just lets me know it's a lot of broken men who are keeping each other company because misery wants company and i feel the same way when i see a bunch of sisters sitting in the space listening to a black woman trash black men all day it lets me know that this has become their comfort zone a lot of y'all have made things that sh have become a crutch to you you have made it your comfort so anyway i have rambled on long enough i've given my point but that's really what it boils down to a lot of y'all are still angry from not being accepted being rejected not being respected and that's why you go to places that are against what you are against who support your delusions who tell you you ain't got to change because you're a black man all black women should want you even if you're not going to change and better yourself. No different than you're a black woman. If a black man is a real black man, he will accept you for who you are. All of us need change. All of us need growth. Y'all need to grow the hell up. It's been the same narratives pushed over and over. And um, YouTube is getting stricter. They're coming after people. Y'all got to be careful with the message y'all putting out here. You're causing people to strike your channels. You're causing people to build a rally against you because you're attacking a certain group of people. That's not going to stand for it. So be careful with the energy you put out there because you could very well get it back. Before you leave, please hit that like button really quick. Hit that like button. Thank you very much. Don't forget, I sell cable. I sell cable. I know a game, special events coming up. If you need cable, I got 9,000 channels for only $25 a month inbox me and i can hook you up especially if you already have a fire stick ladies i do have my own space for y'all mochas ladies lounge make sure you subscribe over there if you want a space in which you can be free and not have to worry about the red pill attack dogs you're welcome to come over there and hang out with me sometimes but anyway y'all it's been real it's been a blessing y'all take care it is your diva in knowledge lady mocha representing mocha's cafe day paris well i'm always serving you wisdom knowledge and spiritual awareness y'all be blessed